Omicron Delta 7, this is Trachia, coming at you live, uh, but a while later, because it's on YouTube and it's not live. Uh, you'll notice, remember, sure, Andy is currently in Hanoi with his family, um, you know, doing Hanoi stuff. We thought we were his family. Yeah. But anyways, Then welcome. you find out who your friends are. Guys will say freaking anything, man. <laughs> but anyways... Welcome to one of the sweatiest track ins. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, see I'm a stinky boy right stinky, now. Stinky, sweaty teacher. We've got it all. Luck- luckily, we forgot to plug in the smell of vision over there. Because uh, yeah. you guys will be in a bad spot. Subscribe. Like, thumbs up for smell of vision. So, yeah, thanks for <laughs> we checking can't, in. Yeah, we can't afford it yet. Okay, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. We're guys. still here at this point. So, we are uh, in our. Track it. Trek, yeah. <laughs> Trek, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is going great. We're, we're at our uh, Airbnb. It's been a while. We missed a week, so sorry about that. But, but we're back now. And we're at our new Airbnb. We've been here for now two weeks. Uh, it's a huge house. Absolutely massive. Too big. We're too big. It's too big. There's five humans and uh, a lot of crawlies in this house. A lot of crawlies. Oh, so yeah. that, that's what we'll go right into. Our house is practically yeah. a jungle. I'll call it a jungle. Yeah. We got well, all sorts of crawlies. There's, you can see like it's, greenery behind us. It's but, about 95% cockroaches. <laughs> I mean, it's not yeah, really a jungle. But we got a koi co- pond. <laughs> we and do we have got a mosquitoes pond. in the we house. Got we got a full mosquitoes. ecosystem indoors. Yeah, we actually are shooting this on the patio today. And just in hopes of maybe getting away from the mosquitoes that are in the house. So <laughs> it's unreal. I think they're there because of the koi pond. Yeah, yeah we have um, a cute also little maybe pond because of the cockroaches. Yeah, it's sort of like oh, they feed on each other. Yeah, you know? they were like, "Hey, cockroaches, get on in here. There's a lot mm-hmm. going on." <laughs> speaking of the jungle, we also have snails that hang out on our like I'll call it our front porch. We and if you them, remember, we call them screamers. <laughs> we call them screamers now. And you have, screamers. and you and you might find yourself wondering why do you call them screamers? Well. You might remember uh, a couple months back, there was a time I stepped on a snail, oh. and it was the crunchiest crunch I've ever heard. Crunch. Like picture, you know, you know, like a stack of Pringles. You know, picture someone oh. just <laughs> crunching all the entire stack. Like that's what it sounded like. That's right? so what happens is to every can of Pringles I buy. <laughs> I just open it up, and somebody <laughs> did the liberty of just making a little more space in that can for my a- hands. Absolutely. Um, so. Anyway, we, we they're no longer crunchers and they're actually screamers and and so so I, I, I stepped on a snail. Um, it was it was dark out. Not on purpose. That was, <laughs> that's mean, dude. It was dark out. I I stepped on a snail and like you know when you step on a snail because like you you kind of feel a little crunch mm. and and like I kind of like lifted up my foot real quick and so I didn't like fully you know kill the guy right on but the dude squealed man. <laughs> it was like eh! and I was like oh my god oh. Yeah, so we thought it could have been like a small rat or yeah. like something. I had no idea because it was dark. Dude, yeah, and it's funny because I saw a squirrel in a tree the other day, and he was yelling. He was just like, <laughs> "What?" And I, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like, I don't, know, I don't know what I thought it was, but when I saw it, it was his mouth making the noise. Like, what's with the animals here? It's <laughs> like really talkative. Yeah. So we've, seen a, we've seen a lot of crawlies. So there was that snail. And then last night. Oh, was, oh yeah. The, the granddaddy that of them all. Fun. The granddaddy long leg of them all. <laughs> there was now like a, it, it was like a Halloween version of a spider. Is that a good description? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Like you take a normal spider, but it's like uh, it's Halloween, and you're gonna make it really creepy and walk like it's. And it's, it's like you can see sweet. the legs like lift up to like, like take stuff. No joke, it was yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was a big guy, a big guy. Yeah, bigger than a credit card when it was not deflated. Right. Uh, so yeah, it was in uh, Avery's room, which is the wrong room to be in if you want to just like get a cheek turned the other way as a, <laughs> as a young, large spider. <laughs> so we get a distress call and we come down, um, bring out the the equipment, the raid, the uh, the Big spider book. blaster. Which, by the way, the raid works by bonding to the. Soul. Yeah, he loves us. Yeah, stuff. we would love to raid do some blast. kind of partnership with raid <laughs> yeah 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 really we, we've reached out to him we're gonna do a couple of promo videos so be looking out for some raid yeah. content soon it's nice Dude, Dude, a book. check out that thing this is oh dude look at that thing look at the legs on that thing oh god holy all's quiet on the western front i guess <laughs> 
I've been getting really good at the far away like drop shot. Three pointers and like using my shoes was the the move before when there were roaches in the kitchen. I would just boom high angle launch a shoe down at them, and you really like you got one shot. And I've, I've been do hitting, not like, miss your shot, chance. Like to shot roll. Um, so last night I blasted that mother stinker. It was probably one of the. Biggest spider, biggest biggest wild spiders I've ever seen. It was Garrett's birthday, and so we yeah. had a karaoke party because we have a karaoke room here. Remember how this house is huge? Well, yeah, it's pretty big. Remember how it's pretty big too? It's pretty huge. Pretty it huge. Is, got uh, a karaoke room in it. Remember how you said karaoke room a couple times? We got a room that's just for karaoke. It's now got we have mirrors. a table in there. Now we have a table in there. Yeah, we moved. It, we turned it into a work room because we don't really like to mess around. Yeah, we don't really. Every now and then I'll like. Like, I'll be working, and I have a nice mic stand, and I'll just casually, like, be typing shit and blasting some... Just singing some sale while you're getting some... Uh, I wasn't thinking in. sale. I was thinking more like Alanis Morissette, you know? Okay. Anything by Skrillex right yeah, now. Yeah, like, like, we're Skrillex. We're really, really enjoying just singing, singing the new Skrillex songs, yeah. all of them, really, and the old it's tracks. It's like, hard to uh, memorize. Oh. Andy's parents stopped by through Ho Chi Minh. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing we did with them was we went to Oktoberfest. That was a good time. Oktoberfest fun. in Saigon. Yeah, Oktoberfest in Saigon. And I've been yeah. to the real Oktoberfest in Munich, and they play all the same songs, <laughs> almost. But no one actually sings to the German ones, believe it or not. It's <laughs> pretty it. crazy. Not. Here, you mean? Here, oh, yeah. No, oh, one, okay. no one could sing to the German songs here. But Dancing Queen, yeah, that happens actually at Oktoberfest. You hear a lot That's of those right. like 80s sing-alongs. Yeah, um, Germans are... Weird people. Don't, yeah, I thought don't the, don't at me, German. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I thought the weirdest thing was because I've never gone to like an actual Oktoberfest event, and my imagine was like everyone would get just way too drunk and it would never end. But it was like the event ended at midnight and it was like eleven o'clock and we were like <laughs> some of the only people left and it was. Like, it was also a weekday though. I right. Guess, so like, but like it was being... also Oktoberfest. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just thought that was strange because, like, the staff is just, like, wait, hoping that we would also leave like everyone else did so they could just clean up early and get out of there. But it was, like, at Boosh the same time, beers back. it was Oktoberfest. What? Like, huh? Yeah. I got there late, so I was playing catch-up at Oktoberfest, which was... Which brings us to our next point. Not great. Yeah. We, we went to get the to the chicken coop where we get chicken wings, and we ordered chicken wings, and, and Andy's parents are vegans, and Andy's dad ate a bunch of chicken wings. That's how drunk he was, so that happened. Yeah, true. and then... Uh, this is all true. These guys went home, and I stayed out with Andy's brother, and I, I had my backpack because I came from work, and I was like, uh, so this is the story of how my backpack got lost in, uh, in Saigon for a couple days with my passport. Yeah, he, has, he had some things in his bag, yeah. too. It wasn't like, just his bag. There's some, sh- some stuff in it. Which was really stressful. Being, like, incredibly hungover, having to clean up your throw up in the sink. <laughs> and it was, like, throwing up kielbasa and sauerkraut because oh, it was, like, Toberfest. And then having to... And don't forget the beef stew. The beef stew. <laughs> the and then beef having, stew. having to reclaim your life in a backpack. Luckily, well, the, we called the dude a couple times, but, you know, he doesn't speak English, so there was no communication happening there. Yeah, it was tough. And luckily we got uh, Jane, our Vietnamese friend, to come over and use my phone and talk to the guy, and we got it figured out. So, yeah. It turned out okay. Yeah, it turned out okay. I gave him, uh, like, a, a tip. He refused it. He was super nice, and he was just, like, really trying to make sure he gave it to the right yeah, foreigner. Yeah, yeah. And... Yeah, it was nice. Did so. you give it? To, did he? Did he take it ever or no? The money? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Good. And I was that's like, good. man, you really saved me. I like, please, please, please. I had to really like really, genuinely yeah. look him in the eyes and be like, I want you to have this. Yes. I'm serious. Like, yeah. Thank you so much. Jason and Avery, they finished their course, and you guys got a job. Yeah, we got a job at VUS. It's a school out here. Two jobs, right? Two jobs, one for each of us, respectively. <laughs> nice. Um, They're really independent. <laughs> yeah. We don't need each other. Not now, not never. Yeah, we got jobs. I taught the last two nights. My first class is tomorrow. It seems like we always shoot the trek ends right before I'm about to do something, so I guess maybe we'll let you know how in it two, goes. In two weeks. Walk. Oh, teaching stories, real quick. Yeah, so uh, teaching stories. <laughs> so I'm getting a lot better at, like, I'm getting good at kindergarten A. Um, I started out like being the fun teacher and they were like you gotta discipline them more I 
can. They're little like five year olds. Like there's little nuggets like, from like, around. I'm, I'm laughing at them. They're like you know they're they're being crazy, but it's like funny and whatever. Yeah. But it's still like there's some classes where it's like man that was rough. Like I couldn't get anything done that I was supposed like trying to. Yeah. And so this these past like two weeks, I really clamped down, and I'm like like I've already shown them I can be fun, and now I'm like being disciplined and. And like still fun when I'm not disciplined, and it's I'm, I'm hitting a nice stride where it's good. And and like yesterday, I had one of the best classes I've ever had. Where we're at the point where it can be fun again, and they know that they have to like yeah. listen listen to teacher. Yeah. Be quiet, listen to teacher, and we'll have we'll have a blast. So yeah, that's good, man. Snapping. Yeah, you're a snapper. <laughs> um, my teaching stories, uh, I I'm kind of on the same same sort of. Uh, uh, cord as Walker here in that I'm getting a lot better at online teaching because there's so many if I were to just say it really quickly like you think about it talk to the camera and maybe like use your hands but there's so many things that you can do like like on my desk I can grab something to help illustrate a point I can leave the camera and like come back in the camera like I can raise my voice lower my voice and there's so many ways that where you can't interact with a student in the in like a a physical sense that you can through the camera so it's been it's been really cool to to get better at that and actually like really connect with kids and just have a blast and and learn and, and I've, I've been getting better at that as well I had a story I wanted to bring up real quick about today there's a cafe right in the corner here and we go there pretty frequently to get uh, coffees in the morning and there's an older lady there and she's a really she's a sweetheart yeah. and every time I go there like she tries to teach me a little bit of Vietnamese yeah. I always forget what it is the next day and I go in there like trying to get her to repeat it so I can like and so, and so she gives me new words every day and I'm like yeah. I don't even remember the last ones ma'am uh, ma'am. Ma'am. Ma so, uh, anyway, so we did that for a little bit. Just give him the freaking ball. <laughs> and um, then she left, or I ordered food. She brought me my food, and then, like, maybe 10 minutes later, she comes and she's got, like, an English dictionary thing. And it's got Vietnamese words and English words, and it's a phrase. And she's like, she, like, underlines this phrase, and it, it, it's like, I don't remember it exactly, but it was basically like, I wish you the best of luck in all that you do. And she was like, like, well, like, you know, like, that's what she wanted to communicate with me. And, you know, that was really cool, uh, obviously. And, and then I tried to get her to, I tried to learn how to say it in Vietnamese. And I got to a point where it sounded okay, but, yeah, I could never, ever, ever replicate that. Anyway, um, then some more time passed. And then she came back to me. And she brought this. Whoa. And it's a, it's a bag, you know? It's got, like, a little, it's like a purse bag, you know? And it looks like it's homemade. And... Um, it's got like some some like mesh on the inside and she brought it to me and she was like like water like water water And I was like I thought maybe it was like a traditional thing where it was like I don't know Maybe they store water in this no, thing. It's like, for your big water bottle. Yeah. Yeah it's, it's for, I, I'm pretty sure it's so be. so anyway, we I think this I mean I don't know if it was because it was like waterproof, you know Or like I was trying to figure it all out, but anyway, so she gave me this oh as a little God. gift and I just had a huge smile and many things and and yeah, you know, and I just came off that zero to thirty challenge where I was, you know, keeping track of what I give and what I get every day. And so it was like, like I truly could. Not that anybody, not that it, like, you couldn't just appreciate this, but it was like she like totally gave this. Right, she to me. totally offset your scale. So yeah, you were like, way really, off. Really, really I, I'm like, what do I gotta give? You gotta, yeah, you gotta head back there. And you gotta man. give it back. Man. Yeah. So you gotta make things anyway, right. so that was a story from literally today. I, I went to the Coochie Tunnels with Andy and his parents and his brother it's last a, week. It's a place. Get your mind out of the gutter, YouTube. Um, yeah, and it was actually it's really interesting. Shoot. It's basically, I don't know if you'd call it a city underground kind of deal. Underground city. Underground city, but it was during the war they built all these tunnels and it was nuts. Like, the tunnels are tiny. They make them bigger for tourists now so that the tourists can get through them and you can barely fit, so I can't imagine, like, how small they were for the real people during the, the time of the stuff. But yeah, and they they showed us all the kind of tra all the traps that they built to kind of protect their land and their areas and it was just... It's really mind-boggling because you hear all, we hear stuff about the Vietnam War on our side in the U.S. But to see, you know, to see the area and where things were happening and what people were doing to survive, it's it's just pretty crazy. And they talked about Agent Orange and all that stuff, and it was just a lot. It's pretty heavy. You know, one thing I just thought of for the first time, like we went there a couple months ago, but like the fact that they're so small, like they had to open up at some point. 
but when you right it's like for people to live like they had to have uh, enough room for them to sleep and stuff they had to open up at some point right um yeah they had little but little like chambers were just were a little bit yeah. larger but but like if you're your entire like family and your your entire city your entire like your life is underground and there's like a, some entrances you want those entrances to be like you are so vulnerable in that situation right like you got to make those tunnels so hard to get into and then like, and they did like yeah they were vulnerable wow. but like like it was like you know with the traps at the entrances and the fake tunnels and the this and the that and mm-hmm. like you know you have it was like smaller american soldiers were the ones that like were like if you were a small guy that's what you were doing you were a tunnel rat and you go in there with your little pistol and you're just crawling in there by yourself you don't know anything you don't know where the traps are you like that would be you would be in foreign territory i just if you find it right if you find the tunnel right and And it you really get a sense for why the u.s had such a hard time because, like, you lose one or two guys to these traps and you're not even close to even finding the soldiers. Like, how demoralizing that would be. You, I don't even want to mess with these tunnels. Like, I don't know where they are. I don't know where the guys are. Even if I do find one and get in, like, I'm still in the extreme disadvantage. Yeah. It's just nuts. Like, how, how do you even fight that? That's crazy. Okay, cool. Well, that that is this week's trek-in. Uh, we, we had so much fun. With you guys. Yeah, dude, we should do this a lot. More often. I bet we'll do another one. <laughs> yep.